Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. After releasing my video on the Nez Pi 4 assembly, which basically covered setting it up with a micro SD and an SSD drive in order to run just the games. Well, many of you have requested that I create a video on how to set up the Nez Pi 4 to boot from an SSD. And that's exactly what our focus is going to be here. Keep in mind you will need a Windows PC in order to perform these steps. And if you need assistance putting your Nest Pi 4 case together, check out this video and this webpage. With that, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to let you know if you go to wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash NESPI4, you'll come to this page, which has all the instructions that you're going to see in this video, as well as a lot of additional information. In fact, I used it for the creation of this video, just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. For my build, I chose the one terabyte Samsung SSD that you see here. I also verified everything worked on a second drive, a Kingston 240 gig. This video is only focusing on the SSD boot option, so if you want to see the full assembly video, check that one out. Alright, so we'll go ahead and take the SSD drive and mount it into the retro flag case or cartridge. So we'll go ahead and pop it in and pop in these four screws. Sweet! Now we'll take the cartridge and go ahead and plug it into the Nez Pi 4 case. And you want to remove these six screws, which I've already done. Then you simply separate the top cover from the bottom of the unit and remove the USB 3.0 cable right here. And now we can set that off to the side. You'll then want to plug this into an available port on your Windows PC and proceed to the next step. To flash the image to the SSD, go to raspberrypi.org and click here, go to the software section and scroll down just a little bit until you see the Raspberry Pi OS Imager, or Raspberry Pi Imager. Click the Download for Windows, go ahead and install it and launch it, then click Choose OS, and look down here where you see RetroPie, select that, and then scroll down a little bit further until you see RetroPie for the Raspberry Pi 4 and 400. Mine happens to already be cached here, but yours will go ahead and download. Go ahead and click it, and then click Choose SD Card, and you should see this J Micron Generic USB device. This is the SATA adapter in the Nez Pi 4 case. So we'll go ahead and select that, and when you're ready, go ahead and click Right, and double check everything's correct, because it will erase everything on there. So go ahead and click Yes, and now RetroPie will go ahead and get installed to your new SSD. Once done, click Continue, and the next step, We'll update the firmware in the SATA adapter, so don't unplug it. Going back to the Nest by 4 webpage, you want to click the Boot from SSD Firmware. Go ahead and download and extract the firmware. Once you do, go into the subdirectory called Method 2. And from there, go ahead and launch the one executable that you see here. You should then see the USB disk, the J Micron Generic, that's your Nest Pi 4 case with SSD installed. Go ahead and click the Load File button and select the file that says No UAS.bin at the very end. If you wind up having any trouble, you can select the other file to restore the firmware. Okay, so now let's go ahead and click the Run button and it'll reflash the firmware of the SATA adapter. And now it says turn off the power, so we'll go ahead and hit OK, go ahead and exit, and safely disconnect. Now we'll simply reconnect the USB 3.0 cable to the base of the Nest by 4 case. So just go ahead and plug it in, and go ahead and make sure you bend that cable just a little bit so it sits on there nicely and isn't pinching. Then you can flip it over and go ahead and install the six screws. Now let's see if it works. Now we'll plug up the micro HDMI and the power adapter. And don't forget, you will need a keyboard for the initial setup of the Wi-Fi and, of course, a controller. So go ahead and plug all that stuff in and hit the power button. And now you'll see this. 
and the file system will get expanded because after all this is a new SSD and then RetroPie will boot. If you've never installed RetroPie before, I highly recommend you check out this video on RetroPie for Raspberry Pi 4 as well as the 10 tips. Links for these videos can be found in the show notes below or wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash nespi4. After getting everything set up, it is wonderful being able to boot from the SSD. There are other things that you also want to do, such as installing the safe shutdown scripts, which I've already covered in the last video, and on this webpage. So there's plenty of information there. Go ahead and check it out, as well as the speed test that was performed against the read-write of the SSDs, as well as your boot time, of which there was very little difference between the SSD and the micro SD as far as booting. And something I find really cool, Denierto Designs created this 3D printed SSD cartridge for Nest Pi 4. I didn't want to end this video without showing you what it looks like, so let's take a quick look. I went ahead and sent it to my FlashForge Creator Pro 3D printer, and this is how it turned out. <laughs> Go ahead and remove all the supports and stuff on it. And yeah, I added some supports that probably weren't necessary. I'll go ahead and pop in this 240 gigabyte Kingston SSD and go ahead and put the screws in. And yeah, it turned out really nice. The shell looks almost identical, but the real test is to see how it fits in the case. So let's go ahead and plug it into the Nest Pi 4. And yeah, it booted up just fine and fit fine and came out fine. So I guess it's fine. <laughs> While I was at it, I went ahead and made these labels up just to see if I could do it. And uh, yeah, it turned out pretty good. They fit the cartridge just fine. Only problem is the label stock that I had was about 20 years old and <laughs> time to get some new label stock because it wouldn't stick to the cartridge very well. I hope you don't mind this little diversion. I'll place these labels up on the webpage. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click the like button. And if you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.